taken from Romans chapter 14. Uh, when you have time, I'd like to encourage you to go back and read the entire chapter. Uh, because of time, I will not be reading it uh, today. But when you go back, read Romans chapter 14. But I just want to highlight to you verse 19. And uh, I'm taking from New Living Translation. I know some of you uh, in your electronic Bible, it might be NIV or ESV or New King James Version. But this is very interesting. New Life Translation. And I'd like every one of us uh, this morning to read together. All right? And let's bless you. Ready? So then, let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up very simple it says so then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up you know friends i really very strongly believe that the local church is the hope of the world Kenyan church kuala lumpur is the hope not only to our community around us but it's also the hope to the world that god has given to us and as a church when we look into the bible the church should both be god center and people oriented it doesn't matter who we are it doesn't matter what race it doesn't matter what status or position that you and I are in. It doesn't matter where we are from. But a very crucial thing is we are all important and accepted by the Lord our God. And you and I, as we are part and parcel of Canaan Church, and this is where we need to gel together. This is where we need to understand the importance of harmony in the church. You know, when we listen to music, I'm sure every one of us here love music, isn't it, right? Love songs. And some of you, you are a professional singer in your bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Some of you, you sing so loud until, you know, when you open the door after your bath, of course you are dressed, huh? Wow, all your friends, somehow, you know, you got a surprise. All the young people clapping hands, blah, 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 blah. You feel so good, you know, whether you're embarrassed or not. But hey, all your friends really clapping. Wow, more, more, more. Then somebody at the back said, more practice. <laughs> you know, we all enjoy laughing. We all enjoy having good friends. We all enjoy harmony. Uh, at home, you know, when there is really such a unity in the family, you know that is, it is such a very loving family, isn't it, right? And likewise for the church, it's so crucial that the Bible tells us that yes, on one hand, you know, we must really have a heart for God. Oh, everybody loves it. Have a heart for God. Love God wholeheartedly. This one, no problem. You know, but we can't... To the point, hey, on the other hand, the Bible tells us that we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. You know, we need to really love people fervently. And this is a challenge. But as far as you and I are concerned, we know that in fulfilling God's mission and in reaching out to the world with God's love, you know, the church of Jesus Christ, whether we like it or not, is we must be united. We must be in a state of harmony for people to know and understand the power and the influence of the local church. That's why we need to have one heart, one mind, and one vision. I do not know whether you still remember the vision of the church. Another vision that we have to refresh your mind is really to seek God, to strengthen people, and to share Christ. Remember the three S? A very easy to remember this overall vision of Canaan Church itself. Seek God, strengthen people, and share Christ. And our mission 
really is to connect and lead people to become faithful followers of Jesus Christ. That is our mission. You know, everywhere we go, this is our mission and our objective is really to connect, you know, to and to lead people to become faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 14, the Apostle Paul deals with matters of Christians' conscience and personal convictions. Very interesting. Christian conscience and personal convictions, especially in relations to relationship with the body of Christ, irrespective of the maturity of an individual, be it strong or be it weak. And Paul is really teaching and addressing this important issue of the importance of harmony in the church. If you study the book of Corinthians, you know that one of the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, seven problems that are facing the Corinth church. One of them is in chapter 3, they're having divisions if you, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians. Some belongs to apostles, uh, the apostle Paul, some belongs to uh, Peter, some belongs to Apollos, you know. And there is great divisions, but Paul addressed the issue and telling them the importance of being uh, united together. And here, she addresses issue. Could be a gentle reminder or a very harsh, a strong, a strong advice or warning to the church the importance of why we need to aim to be harmonious and also to build one another. We cannot talk about, oh, we're going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to lead people and connect them, you know, to be faithful followers of Jesus if the church is not united. And here, I'd like to share with you in Romans 14, how can we be harmonious? How can Canaan church be united together? There are four commitments. If we apply these four commitments, I want to believe by faith that in time to come, that we will begin to gel together, to appreciate one another, and to continue to stir and build one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still here with me? There are four commitments I'd like to share with you. And the first one is accept the faith level of one another. Everybody say accept. accept. Right. You know, acceptance is very important, isn't it? Some of us, we feel that, oh, you know, I'm not accepted by my family. Sad. Sad, isn't it? I'm not accepted by my family. I'm the black sheep. I'm the black sheep. And when it comes to church, there are only a handful that accept me because of my past. But there are people in the church that do not accept me. You know, when we hear that, we say, oh, how sad. We talk about Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. But in reality, is we don't even want you to, to be their friend. But here, the Bible is telling us, and Paul is very straightforward and very frank when it talks about the power and the importance of unity. That we must accept the faith level of one another. That's why in verse 1, it says, Accept him whose faith is what? Weak. Without passing judgment on these beautiful matters. Paul recognized the importance of, of people of different levels of faith. And even here right now, it is represented that all of us are in different levels of faith in our level. Some of you have been a Christian for 20 years, some probably 40 years. 40 years by right, your Christian maturity should be very high. And you know the importance 
of unity. But some probably you have been a Christian, you know, just for six months, and your spiritual maturity in the Lord is still very shallow. There are a lot of things you do not understand. So we are in different categories, and we need to recognize that, you know. And it's so important for us to stir and help one another, though we are in different levels of faith. Every church is made up of a broad spectrum of personalities. Some might not be spiritual mature, as I mentioned. And all the more, we need to accept the faith level of one another. In the eyes of God, you and I are the same. Amen? We are all sinners saved by grace. No one is better than another person. And I pray that this church, that we will learn, that we will value one another and we will accept one another. I remember when I was a young Christian, not in Bible school yet, but somehow God by His grace has put a stirring in my heart, uh, the hunger for Him, and also the importance of, of being a faithful follower. And there's always a hunger to, to, to know more about the Bible. And during my college days, uh, not in Bible school, but during my college days and my studies, I got to know a Singaporean pastor who came over to the church, uh, got to know him, you know, and we became good friends. I know there are people that you can just gel, you know, uh, and uh, he invited me, you know, uh, come, come to Singapore, you know, and uh, you can always welcome to my place and stay. So I, I accept that invitation, you know, and, uh, and, uh, so I, I, I went to his place, you know, and uh, he's a very good pastor. Uh, during that time, he was, uh, yes, he's already, he has graduated from uh, Bible school, and uh, he's, uh, he's one of the lecturers in uh, Bible, Bible college. Uh, but he would never, in a sense, elevate himself that, wow, he is more spiritual, he's more knowledgeable, and of course he is, you know, a Bible school lecturer. But yet, he accepts me as I am, and uh, in, in the midst of all these uh, friendships that I was with him, and whenever I went to his place, very interesting is that, that he will, it's like a, a discipleship, you know, that it's like a, uh, he is my mentor, and uh, he, will, he will bring me to Christian bookshops, you know, during that time in Singapore, uh, they're very uh, good ones, and he will bring me to the Christian bookshops, and, and then he will just tell me, you know, uh, for, to grow in your Christian life, uh, it is very important to have uh, some resources for our own personal development. And he will just share with me, you know, as if that I'm a growing Christian, and he said, you know, this is very good. Uh, these are what we call dictionaries. Uh, he, will, he will share with me uh, this section, these are dictionaries. Uh, and uh, if you would like to buy, you know, this is a very good dictionary. He, and he will, he will uh, tell me, you know, I say, oh, I see, that's very good. And then you go to another section, you know, uh, concordance are very important. Do you know what's concordance? You know, sometimes you need to read the word, uh, but you couldn't find where it is, you know, a particular word like faith. Oh, there's so many in the Bible. And so he said, concordance are very important. If you really want to be serious in the word of God, uh, you need these tools dictionary uh, concordance and then another section uh, he will share with me commentaries are very important you know uh, where sometimes when you read the bible we don't understand what they are talking about we are very familiar right and he said commentaries uh, will enable us to know the historical background of the book and then after that i will look with the authorship you know he just explained to me i said oh okay <laughs> okay uh, but it's, it's very uh it is like a revelation uh, for me. I'm a new Christian, and uh, but he, he shows me the importance of wow. I didn't know there are so many things I uh, I need to know, and there are resources like this. But of course, as as a student, is that wow? Oh, where am I going to get the money to buy all these things? You know, and of course, somehow it plays a hunger in me. But I think at the end of the day, is that that I appreciate his his sharing. Uh, did not 
uh, put me in a sense, in a position that I, I'm, I'm less knowledgeable than him. But he is opening up as if that, you know, we are at the same level and he shared with me in, in terms of all this importance and that actually uh, enables me to see uh, in a better perspective uh, the importance of having, having all these resources for me to grow in my Christian life. So I saved money and uh, when I came back to Malaysia, you know, there are certain things that when I went to Christian books, I said, oh, okay, now I understand. Oh, this is at least something that I need to have. Something that, so I saved up money and over the years, I managed to get some of these tools uh, for my own personal spiritual development. I came up with my own program, really, uh, a spiritual, a personal spiritual development program. Uh, and, uh, and that charted for me uh, in terms of knowing the Bible. And that really helps me. Uh, and here, again, is that I think uh, the, uh, the important thing is that He accepts me as I am. And you know, likewise, you know, when I think about this is that, hey, I think in life and as we come to church, it is so important that people accept us as we are. True or not? Right? We, we do not come to church, you know, that we are putting up a show that uh, we must dress up in such a way that people can, can uh, you know, recognize us uh, and people accept us. But people just accept us as we are. And I pray that uh, we will learn to value, we will learn to accept one another in Kenya Church. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen? You know, that everybody is important. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are important. That's right. Yeah, some said very important. What's so important about me? Uh, that one you, you talk later, okay? <laughs> right? So this is, this is important. Accept the faith level of one another. If we have a, a newcomer coming to our church, you know, and we help the person. We help the person, and then if that person is really hungry for the word of wanting to know more about Christ, we will channel the person from one after another. I know the church. Uh, there is there is an intern uh, intentional discipleship program. You know, and. Uh, we are working on it to, to revamp some of the things, uh, but later uh, we are going to introduce and, uh, and uh, to you, I'm telling it now by faith, I'm still working on it, you know, and Brother Isaac has shared with me the, the importance of follow-up and all this. Uh, we are working out a, a, a program in such a way that it is intentional, uh, tools that will help you uh, as a tracking system, you know, you as a believer. Uh, it could be a spiritual journey of, of your life. What must I do now that I am a Christian? So these are some of the things that I'm working on uh, so that at the end of the day, everybody probably will get a card and that is your indication that you can mark, you know, level one or track one this is what I need to do. Once you finish track one, you go to track two. This is what I need to do. And then track two. Now, if you do that, then you begin to see that your faith increases. So we want to make it easy for you and also help one another in this area. So everybody is actually journeying together. Now, so this is the first point. Accept the faith level of one another. The second commitment to achieve the unity or harmony in the church is avoid any stumbling block out of love for one another. Everybody say avoid. The first one is accept. Now we are talking about avoid. Right? Verse 13, it says, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, Make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Very straightforward, isn't it? Right? Very straightforward. Avoid any stumbling block out of love for one another. You know, friends, it appears that Christianity has the highest form of moral and ethical standards. Think about it. In comparison with all other religions in the world, that we in our Christian faith demands 
that we will have the highest form, highest of ethical and moral standards. In the marketplace, if a Christian is stealing, somebody said, wow, Christian can do that. If a Christian is doing something that is not right, you know they always point finger, isn't it? But if they are in another faith, they don't say, oh, yo, the guy can do it. Yeah. But when we are Christian, they say, oh, yo, Christian like that one. Now. <laughs> in that kind of phrase. And then we are put into a position that, wow, they are watching me, man. You know? Wow, just one mistake. Finish. Kaput. <laughs> you know? It's like the moral compass of Christ's followers. It's not determined by man's standard, but God's standard. And the world expects all those who are associated, who associate with the Lord Jesus Christ, really to have a higher standard than they do. Whether we like it or not, that is the parameters or the moral compass as far as they are concerned. They are assuming and believing that if you are the Christian, you are supposed to be a good guy, a holy guy, somebody that they, they can actually trust and also recognize that, hey, you are really a holy joke. <laughs> And we need to be aware that there are some things that probably other people could probably get away with. But as far as we are concerned, we are a believer of the Lord Jesus. And as I said, they are always watching us. That's the price of Christianity. That's the price of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we know, Christianity is not really a religion, but our relationship with God. And Christianity is not about do's and don'ts. Isn't it? But yet, somehow, in our Christian conscience and conviction, it's like the Holy Spirit will just move us to a realm of being better and to the realm of holiness and purity in our life. In Christ, as you and I know very well that we have been set free from all bondages and sin. We all have. If we still have, then we need to come to the Lord in prayer. And the liberty and the freedom of expression of our Christian faith that it must not be tainted once again by sin and shame. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23 says, Yes, everything is permissible in life, but not everything is beneficial. We have all the freedom to do anything that we want. But yet, the Bible says not everything is beneficial. Stumbling blocks can be in different forms. It can be through our speech, the choice of words that we use when we chit chat with people. There's some words that we know is not edifying and we don't use it. But your friends, it's like a machine gun and they use it very easily. You know, they can come up, you know, with some of those words. But hey, for us is we hold back. We don't utter those words. Why? Because we are a child of God. And the Holy Spirit has changed us. Because if we utter one of those words that comes up from our mouth, then there's no difference with non-believers. 
We don't utter foul language. Why? Because it's a decision and also the change that God has placed in our life that we will not be a stumbling block to our friends. There are other things. The daily activities of our life, there are some activities that we should not enter into. Why? Because it's just not us that we cannot. The behavior and mannerism in our life. Pray that that we're going to avoid any stumbling block. And the word is out of love. Out of love for one another. Now, what's your reaction? If you see me wearing a party shirt outside the casino at Gunting Highlands, what will be your reaction if you see me wearing a Batik shirt outside the casino at Kenting Highlands? Oh, Pastor, you are here! Wow, Batik shirt, huh? I do not know if any of the young people recognize or not there is a dressing code to enter casino. One of them is Batik shirt. If it's not a party shirt, it's you must have a coat. I do not know whether the seal applies that or not. None of you dare to raise up your hand. Okay. <laughs> Another question. What's your reaction if you see me wearing a party shirt inside the casino at Genting Highlands? Oh, Pastor, you are also here. You are also here. <laughs> What are you doing here, huh, Pastor? So checking on you, Lord. <laughs> Come, let's play together. <laughs> Don't strengthen my arm. <laughs> I do not know whether you know the joke or not. <laughs> Left hand first. <laughs> After that, right hand. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. <laughs> All the kind, all the coins come up. Wow, Pastor, you won oh, oh. <laughs> Finish low after that, you know. Oh, on social media, Pastor Daniel from Canaan Church. Wow, inside casino. Not only that, wow, from the machine he won ten thousand ringgit. Wow, can I say praise the Lord? <laughs> ten percent to tithe, sir. <laughs> Stumbling blocks. Knowingly or unknowingly, unknowingly, sometimes if we are not careful, uh, we can actually fall into that. So we have to be very careful with our Christian life. Amen? Amen. That pray that God will give us the grace, wisdom, to avoid anything that will stumble our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Out of love. You see, there are certain things that I, 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 I don't do. I can do it if I want to, but if I stumble my brother or my sister, then I, I will just abstain. You know, I'll just abstain. Out of love for like, my brother or sister who are younger in the faith, who do not understand, who are still immature. That is what we need to do to help ourselves and at the end of the day is to bring harmony in the body of Christ. So the focus is really is on what we share in common, not in our differences. And we must always strive, strive, aim not to be stumbling blocks, but I call it building blocks. Building blocks. Third commitment. Not only accept, avoid, but the third commitment for a harmonious church is adhere to principles for living. We have the third one, right? Adhere to kingdom principles for living. Verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, 
peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's kingdom principles. Peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And it's not a surprise to hear of Christians who don't get along with others. Here in this context, when you go back and read, that's exactly what Paul is talking about. He's talking about eating and drinking. Uh, not in the mind where, you know, drinking beer, uh, eating pork, and uh, things that will stumble. And in that, in that uh, historical and cultural setting, uh, you know very well that some of the things that they abstain. And not saying that, oh, Christians should not drink. Uh, we are not entering into that kind of debate. You know, that certain food that you should abstain. But in that context, when they talk about the Jews, uh, they, they have actually uh, certain things uh, in their life that they abstain. But here, Paul recognized that there are arguments. There are differences. There are people who actually cause others to stumble. But at the same time, it's come to the point of argument, you know, hey, you, you as a faithful believer of Jesus Christ, pointing finger, how can you do this? You know, how can you do this? You know, and all these things came about, and that's where Paul addressed the issue. And today, it is also true in our day, and it was also true in the days of Paul. You know, one of those examples that you can really see in Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 to 3, uh, that talks about some, due to some differences of personal matters, there are two sisters in Christ that have actually entered into major disputes and arguments. Euidia and Syntyche. And we were informed that these two ladies in a church in Philippi were really having very strong dispute to the point that it becomes very personal. That they are not able to see eye to eye in the church. But when they see eye to eye, it's fiery eyes. And, and that is said that their personal conflict actually has escalated to the point that not only that that affected the unity in the local church but the news of these two ladies not talking about in general that ladies are the problem makers uh, but these two ladies during that time that not only uh, become the, the top of the town in that church but even that it has gone out to outstation where Paul knew about it you know, today, social media, can you imagine? You know, if there is a dispute in Canaan Church, I think, even while I'm talking right now, if there is, some of you probably some, already on Facebook, already on Instagram, already in this and that, you know, and oh, after that, boom, 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 wow, overseas members also know about it. And that's what happened. Bad blood between believers threatening to disturb the unity and the fellowship of the whole church. A small matter become a big matter and then cause divisions in the church and then there'll be factions. And then you see when it comes to church, one side, that's one group. The other, another group. You know, sad. It's really sad. And that's why in Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 to 3, Paul actually stated this, I implore you, dear, and I implore syndicate. It's like pleading. To be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel. In other words, hey, it's like, they are also committed Christian. 
with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So it appears that, hey, even mature Christians, if they are not careful, they can get involved into disputes and arguments, maybe due to some matters of uh, theology, church policies, or even matters of some personal issues, which is very, very dangerous if it is not dealt and handled maturely and carefully. As I say, news of this rising tension has actually reached Paul, and Paul has to address this and remind them that if, you, if we talk about the preaching of the gospel without shame, and we want to propagate and share to different countries or different cities or communities and beyond, how can you carry on sharing about the love of Christ if there is division in the church? How? There's no way. You know, and Paul addressed that issue, the importance of harmony in the church, and it requires at times, if there is one, it requires a lot of hard work and prayer that this will dissolve and resolve in a very loving way. It is really sad to hear stories of members fighting. Some cannot see eye to eye in the church. After the service, one of them will walk from the left side, another from the right side. It's really sad. Arguments, having major differences, to the point of having the church side them and church split and divided. And I'm sure you have heard of stories of divisions in the church. Some churches, even in Malaysia, split. Split because of the senior pastor, because of the board members, because of church members, you know, it's real sad. At the end of the day, who is winning? Who is winning? It's the devil who is laughing. And that's what he's doing. His full-time ministry is to divide. You see? That's S.A. Tan. Huh? Whether it's a Chinese, we will know later. <laughs> Any one of you from Tan? Okay, don't worry. You know, you're safe. Sin. And then outsiders, non-Christians, talk about the church. Wow, church, huh? so hot huh? in politics. You know, they tell me, ask me, wow, hey, pastor, you know, because I, I have other non-Christian friends. There are cases in other churches and overseas as well. They also know nowadays, wow, very hot topic right now. This church huh? in Singapore, wow. You know, talk, 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 talk. Wow, church also got so many politics. Huh? You know? How to share the gospel to them? Difficult, isn't it? Really difficult. You know, how to invite friends to church? If there's really one in the church like this, how to invite friends to Canaan Church? You know, Canaan Church is very loving. They come to the church, they can sense it already. You know, they can sense it. When there is division in the church, people can sense it. True or not? Yeah, people don't talk, don't smile with one another, you know. It's like there is a funeral service. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling also, you know, very superficial, you know. And uh, introduce friends, that group cannot introduce one, you know. And introduce this side, you know. Go for lunch, oh, just bring along the other, oh, no need, I think he's busy. So sad, so sad. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 it says, Dear brothers and sisters, I appeal to you by the authorities of the Lord Jesus Christ to stop arguing among yourselves. Let there be real harmony so there won't be divisions in the church. And I plead with you to be of one mind, united in thought and 
purpose. That is talking about the Corinth church. And here we apply it even in this context of being united for the love of our fellow brothers and sisters and for the love of God that we love so much. So focus on kingdom living. That is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, church, when we focus on this righteousness, that yes, purity, holiness, being a righteous person is important. God's favor will come upon the church. When we focus on peace, instead of battles and wars and having joy, you can sense that the atmosphere in the church change. People walk into the church and say that this is a very friendly church. This is a very warm and caring church. People can sense. You know, when people chit-chat with one another, I sense that you guys are very different, you know. That there's something in you that, that is how I wish my family will have this. You know, you all can just chit-chat, you know, and you're, you're, wow, it's like a very loving, very loving church. And they want to come back. Hey, that is what we want in our church. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, amen. I'm not saying that we don't have, huh? Uh, but I think it can be better. When all of us, we are going to do it together, then we begin to see that this church is going to spread everywhere. Oh, you must come to Cana Church. The moment you walk into our morning fellowship, you can sense it already. You know, you can send it, you see the smile, and people will serve you with a nasi lemak, you know, and then there's a te tare, you know. Uh, in time to come, we have a brew coffee or Zeus, you know, wow. pray hard. <laughs> All right, and wow, you know, all these things come in. You know? And finally, finally, one more point how to be harmonious is aspire to build one another. Everybody say, aspire. Aspire, aspire to build one another. It says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. In fact, there's another translation that the New Living Translation say, as I mentioned earlier, uh, let us aim for harmony in the church and try to what? Build each other up. Everybody loves encouragement. I love encouragement. If people come to me and say, oh pastor, you know, good preaching, keep it up. Wow. It, it's, it's really very encouraging. Pastor, thank you for your message, you know. It really speaks to my heart. Wow, very encouraging, isn't it? Right? Yeah, if people come to you, wow, you did a good job, you know. Oh, Brother Rollins, I enjoy the worship. I'm sure Brother Rollins will feel good. Wow, thank God, you know. He has been praying and fasting for seven days, seven nights. You know? <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, say, oh, your worship sucks. Oh, don't say that, you know. Wow, I mean, my, all my prayer, prayer and fasting for seven days, seven nights. Somehow it didn't work, you know. But yet when you say, oh, Brother Roland, Brother Roland, I just enjoy your worship, you know. And uh, I just sense your presence. Wow, that will encourage you, isn't it? Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a note. Just a note. You just must have, you know. Wow. Hey, Colin, is it Colin the one playing the drums? <laughs> Colin, eh? Colin. Sometimes I mix up with, that's another one, it's like Gordon. Eh? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, wow, Colin. Enjoy your drumming. Wow. I won't say more practice. Okay. Wow, yeah, you know, that will really stir him. Wow. Thank God, you know. And uh, to pick up other skills, you know, that will really bring about, you know, uh, the, the, in terms of the dynamics of our worship here. Everybody loves encouragement, isn't it? Even Animals also love encouragement, you know. I, I know some of you have you have dogs. I know Brother Isaac has one, you know. I've yet to see his, his beloved dog, you know. And uh, wow, I'm sure the dog, you know, every time comes back, wow, the tail, you know, oh, moving, moving. You know. Wow, you just feed the dog. Wow, I tell you, heaven is on earth, you know. Yeah, you know, it's like, wow, I have a great master, you know. And yeah, you know, even dogs, uh, needs to be encouraged, isn't it? Right? It's like, wow, 
you know, maybe the dog said, Lord, Lord, thank you very much for Brother Isaac, <laughs> who is my master, you know, as, yeah, dogs also do that, you know, how much more? We as human beings, we need to encourage one another, and all the more in the church. You know, everybody that walks into the church, you think everybody on Sunday got happy face, huh? <laughs> No, isn't it, right? Some of us really, we come to church, why? Because we need God. True or not? Yes. I know there are problems in our life, uh, but I still believe that Sunday is Sunday. It's the house of the Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, I'm going to walk to the church, and as I worship you, as I pray, I want to believe that my problem, you are going to take care. Amen. See? You're my problem, you're going to take care because you are my God, and I want to come and worship you. You know, there are many people who walk into the church. You think everybody is, wow, always on a high mountain experience, everybody smiling, everything is good. How are you? Fine, fine, you know, but inside it's not fine, you know. Yeah, some of them are struggling, but they won't tell you. They won't tell you. But when just one encouragement in their life, somehow all of a sudden there is an inner energy that just, just come, and then, wow, the faith in God all of a sudden, Lord, I thank you that I'm in church this morning. Because my brother has just uttered a word that I need for my life. You know, that is what we need to do as a believer of Jesus Christ. You will never know when God is going to use us, but very important is we must always aim in our life, God, make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. That I will always utter words of encouragement, not divisions, not to tear people down, not to criticize, but to compliment one another. You know, that's very important. We must always be positive in our mind. That not always in a very critical spirit, you know, always like to criticize, we win the argument, you know, conversations, then become a champion. But actually, we are the loser. Why? Because our friends, they are struggling, you know, negativity, criticism, they are in a state of discouragement, and you still want to tear them down. Cannot. We are the church supposed to be the hope of the world to bring hope and healing to our fellow brothers and sisters you know that's where we need one another i need your prayer you think i'm always at mountain top no yes i do hiking every week i'm at mountain top <laughs> but hey even as i'm at the peak there are struggles in my life as well you see but i need god and there'll be times i will go to the woods that's why every week I enter into the woods. You know, I said, Lord, I need your strength. I need your strength. And there are many teachings that Jesus will taught us, teach us. Why Jesus occasionally sleep himself and hide himself somewhere alone in the woods? Ah, that's where he regained his strength. The moment when he came out, wow, signs and wonders happening. Isn't it right? Miracles happening. People are encouraged. You know, all the more we must do that gain energy to receive, pump up all we need, and then when we come out, when we come to church, we are a blessing to people. Amen. So God, use me. It doesn't matter, we are not talking about position here, not only pastors, we are not talking about board members. All of us, we are one in the body of Christ. We need to build one another. And that is what I believe we can help it's no, it's a choice. It's a decision whether we want to do it or not. But I pray that each one of us here this morning say, Yes, Lord, I want to decide. I want to choose to encourage rather than criticize. I'm going to aspire to build up one another and not to tear down one another. Things that are not good, I'll just keep quiet. And I'm going to pray. But things that are good to build one another, and I'm going to do that. You know, in conclusion, we are not a perfect church. But we desire to build and grow a loving and harmonious church. That is our aim. We are going to do all we can, all we can, to remove anything that is going to prevent us from being united. We can be healthy. We can. We will keep on growing in joy, in peace, in hope, and power in the Holy Spirit. And this will create harmony 
in the church. And together, friends, let us, let us make Canaan Church a loving and harmonious church. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. I hope this loud amen will resonate every Sunday. Amen. That the result is we will influence people and impact our community and beyond with the love of Jesus Christ. I want to end with this quote by St. Augustine that is very common and popular but a reminder for all of us. In essential unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, charity. And together, we can help to keep the harmony and the unity in the church. If we apply these four commitments as a recollection and summary, let's read together. Accept the faith level of one another. Number two, avoid any stumbling block out of love for one another. Adhere to kingdom principles for living and forth aspire to build one another.